Hi everyone, it's Lynn Dion here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today we're going to be making a fun swish and pop card using some products from Lawn Fawn. So let's go ahead and get started. So from the Virtual Friends add-on set, we'll be using quite a few of these little images. And later on, we'll be using those two sentiments as well. And then from this set, your Just My Type, we're going to be using the desk, the little mouse, and that lamp. So I've gone ahead and placed those on my Mini Misty stamp positioner. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp those. I'm using the VersaFine Onyx Black ink and some Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock. I'm going to stamp that a couple of times and then I'll just flip this around and stamp that again. That'll give me two of each of these images. So I went ahead and stamped that two times as well. And now we can go ahead and stamp our little mice. So now that we have those all set, I need a few more images. So I'm from the Crazy Antics set, I'm going to grab the soda, the chips, and that sandwich. And then I end up taking one of those little mice instead of the one that I had chosen previously. But I'll show you that a little bit later. And from the plain and simple stamp and die set, I'm using that paper airplane. So now with light green, I'm going to start coloring in these two chairs. I'm adding the color to the sides, and then I'm just going to pull that in towards the center. I'm using my Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens, and these are a water-based pen, so they're really easy to blend. And I am using the blender pen to do my blending here, but you could certainly use a water brush as well. So again, I'm just bringing the color in towards the center and leaving that little highlight down the middle of the chair. You, you can always come back in with a little bit more of that color if you want to darken up those edges a little bit. And then for the wheels and the base of the chair, I'm going to be using the gray. Now with the blender, you can also pull off color and you see me doing that there. If you have a little bit too much color, you can just grab some of that color from your image and scribble it onto your scrap paper. And you can also clean off your blender pen on your scrap paper as well. And you'll know that it's clean when it goes clear and then you can change colors. So I did the same thing for the other chair. And now with the gray brown, I'm gonna go ahead and do this desk. And I'll just add some shadows up towards the top and the bottom here. And you don't have to be real fussy here. You just want to create some different highlights and shadows here. And I'll do both of these desks the same color. So I'm just creating two little office spaces for my card. We're going to create like a cubicle for these little mice to be sitting in. So I kind of want the desk to be the same, but we'll make the, some of the accessories a little bit different colors. Just to add a little bit more interest here. And then for the top of the desk, I'm just going to add color to each side and then pull in towards the center. It'll just give us a little highlight there, right down the center. I did the same thing for the other desk. And now for the potted plant, I'm using light green and green to do my leaves. I'll add the light green first and then a little touch of the dark green down towards the base of the leaves. And then we'll just pull that out towards the edges. And then I'm using cobalt blue to do the little pot for this plant. And then for this other plant, we'll use the pink. And I did that the exact same way. I'm going to use that pink again to do this lamp. And I'll do that other one in the cobalt blue. I'll use that gray again just to do 
the little arm on the lamp. And then a little bit of yellow here for the bulb. And while I have that yellow out, I'm going to do this little cup holder. This just has some scissors and a couple of pencils in it. And now for the paper airplane, I'm just using a light gray. I'm just going to add a little bit of a shadow just where those folds are, and then I'll just blend that out. And then for the soda, I'm using the light gray. And then a little bit of yellow and orange for the chips. And for that can of soda, a little later on, I'm going to come in with a little bit of color. I'm going to add a little bit more color to that. And I decided to use a little bit of orange here. And I'll just put that on the two edges and then pull in towards the middle. And then for the sandwich, I'm using the beige for the bun. Going back to the yellow for the cheese. And I'm using that light green again to do the lettuce. And then I'll just use a little bit of light gray here for the meat inside that sandwich. And now for my little mice, I'm using light pink, beige, and mid-brown. I'll start with that light pink. And here's where I didn't decided not to use that little mouse up at the top there because he's facing backwards. And I did decide I wanted one facing towards this, the side. So I did go back to that other set and grab that other mouse. And I'll show you that here in a second. Just adding a few shadows here to this little guy. So now I've got the coordinating dies, and I'm going to go ahead and run all of these through my die cutting machine. I'll tape them down with a little bit of purple tape. And I'm running those through the Sizzix Sidekick machine. Now that I have all of those pieces die cut, and I did die cut, in the end I die cut four of those little paper airplanes. Now I'm switching out that little mouse there, as I mentioned before, for that little mouse that's turned sideways there. So now let's work on the swish and pop mechanism. So these are the dies that will create that mechanism. And this first piece here I'm going to die cut out of the Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock. And the second piece I'll cut out of the acetate. So I've gone ahead and run those through my die cutting machine. And now for the panel to attach our mechanism to, I'm using the perfectly plaid petite paper pack and the outside in stitch rectangle stackables dies. And I'm using that largest one. So I'm going to go ahead and run that through the die cutting machine. And now we can go ahead and die cut the holes we will need to create the mechanism. So I'm lining this little L shape up down towards the bottom of this panel. So right along the right hand side and then right up to the bottom edge there. So it'll line right up. I'm taping that down with a little bit of purple tape and run that through the die cutting machine and that will create four little holes. Now I've got my acetate piece and my cardstock piece. So I'm going to go ahead and place a mini brad through both of these. So I'm using the hole at the very right of the acetate sheet. And now I'll take a second mini brad and I'll place that in the second hole on the acetate. Now I can go ahead and place those in one of these holes and I'm going to place it in the second hole from the right hand side, which I will switch out a little bit later, but for now we'll place it there and see where that needs to be. So I'm using my Lawn Fawn Textured Dot cardstock. And I'm going to go ahead and use the yellow. And you can see all the beautiful colors you get in there. So I want to create my little office cubicles for my card. So I'm using the outside in stitch rectangle stackables. And I'm using that largest die from that set that we used earlier. So I'm, I've gone ahead and run that through my die cutting machine. 
Now I'm going to cut this panel down to about three inches. Now I want to test that and see where that's going to be on my card because I'm going to have my little paper airplane up above and I just didn't think that was going to give me enough room there. So I'm going to go ahead and cut off just a little bit more. So I'll just cut that down. I'll just take off about a quarter inch off of that. Now that we've got that cut down to size, I'm going to go ahead and start attaching all of my little pieces here. So I've got my desk. I'm using my Lawn Fawn glue tube to attach these pieces. And I just want it to look like these two little cubicles, two little office cubicles. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these two together here side by side. Now at this point, this is where I should have cut my little notch. And I did put a little message up top there so you know that's when you probably should stop and cut that notch out. I do it a little bit later. It's okay. It worked just fine. But ideally, I would do it at this point here. So I'm going to go ahead and attach all of these little pieces. Some of these I'll pop up with a little bit of foam mounting tape. And again, I'm just trying to create the look of a little office here because these two little mice are going to be shooting these little paper airplanes at each other. And um, so I want to give the illusion that these little offices are side by side. So again, I'm popping up the little chair here and I'll do the same thing for the other one as well. And then I'm also going to pop up the little mouse. And this little guy's the little instigator. He's the one shooting these paper airplanes over into the other cubicle. So that's the little mouse facing the other way now. And now I'm going to go ahead and some of these little paper airplanes have already landed in his office here. So I've got a couple of these and I'm just going to kind of randomly place these in here. And you'll see later on, I'll end up moving that little potted plant after I cut that little notch out. I'm just putting a little foam mounting tape there. And then I can go ahead and put all these little items on the desk. The sandwich, the soda, the little, the little uh, bag of chips, and then I've got those little cups full of office supplies there as well. So I'll do the same thing for both sides. I just kind of mixed them up a little bit on the other side and put them in a little bit different order. So once I had those all set, I'm taking another look at my little mechanism here and I decided to move this over all the way over. So it'll be the fourth notch. So I've got it on that very last notch there. And I'm going to just check and see if that's going to position it where I want my airplane to be. So I'll just place that here just temporarily just to see where that is. And that looks pretty good to me. I like about where it's positioned. So now I'm going to take a little bit of tape from my Tombow Tape Runner and I'm going to place some right at the very top of the acetate where I want that paper airplane to be. And then I can just go ahead and cut away any excess. So now you see that that paper airplane is going off the cardstock here. So I do need a little stopper there so that it won't go too, too far. So I'm going to use some foam mounting tape. I'm just going to cut a small little chunk of this just as the little stopper here. Now you'll see that it, when I tested it out, it just went right over the top of that tape. So I'm going to double up my foam tape here. So I'm going to have two pieces of foam tape stacked on top of each other. And that will also give a little bit room, more room for my mechanism to work underneath the cardstock here. So now I just need to figure out where that little notch is going to be. And that's where I determined that I had already placed everything down. So I did end up removing this little potted plant so I could cut the notch. And don't worry too much about it. I mean, I, I was able to easily fix this afterwards. But again, you want to cut your notch before you place all these little pieces on here. But if you don't and you forget like I did, don't worry about it. You'll still be fine. So now I'm going to line up that little bar underneath where it's nice and straight. 
And then I'm going to line up those two little notches on this die. And right along the edge of the card, you can see those two little notches are lined up exactly with that little tab that's sticking out. And now I can go ahead and run that through the die cutting machine. So that did create that little stitch notch. And now I can go ahead and place my potted plant back down. With. So now with this little mechanism, I'm going to push it in all the way, all the way to the left. And then I'm going to cut off that excess. So I've basically just lined it up with the plaid cardstock and cut away the excess. Now I just want to create the little tab for that mechanism, the little arrow. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that out of that same yellow cardstock that we used before. I'll just fold that on the score line and then I'll go ahead and put some glue on the back of this and then attach it to that little mechanism. So I'll just let that dry. Now I'm going to double up my foam tape. Remember we doubled up earlier for the little stopper. So we're going to double up all the rest of the tape that is going to go behind this. Now you do want to be careful where you place the tape here because you don't want to interfere with your mechanism at all. So you do need to kind of keep checking to see where you're putting this tape. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this in half just to get some narrow strips of this. And then again, I'm just going to check and see where I need this. So I know I can put a little over to the left here. And then I don't want to get in the way of that little swing arm there, right there. So I'll put some more off to the right hand side here. And then again, I'm just going to check. I know I can put some up in this upper left hand corner. And I can put some up here in the upper right hand corner. And again, I'm just I just keep checking just to make sure, just to test it and make sure I'm not getting tape in the way of any anything that's moving here. So I'm gonna put a little bit of tape in this on this side as well. And then a little bit more down the right hand side of this panel. You do want to have enough so that this cardstock is popped up, but you don't want too much so that it gets in the way of anything. So I can go ahead and remove the backing and attach this to the front of my card. Now, now you can see that's working really well. I just think this is so cute. I love that this little guy is shooting all these little airplanes over. So now I've got my standard A2 size card. And I'm going to use glue on the back of this. And I, I just want to not, I'm not going to put glue right around that brad, the back of the brad. I'm just going to let that be loose there even though I don't think it really matters but I'm going to be careful there. So I've centered that on the front of my card and now I want to do the sentiment for the inside of the card. So I'm going to grab another one of those stitched rectangle dies, a little bit smaller one, and then I'm going to grab those two sentiments. I'll go ahead and line these up on the center of my card. And again, these say, sending smiles from my desk to yours. And then I'll go ahead and center that on the inside of my card. And again, I'm going to use the glue just so I can move it around a little bit if I need to here. And then I'll tape one of those little paper airplanes, right, as though it's kind of coming into the card as well. Sort of give the illusion that it came from the front of the card to the inside of the card.
And I know I probably shouldn't admit this, but this is what we used to do on a Friday afternoon when I was uh, an accounting manager in my previous life. Um, we would just send paper airplanes or elastic bands over the cubicles. I know that sounds terrible, but we used to just get silly by a Friday afternoon. So here's a closer look at our card. And these guys are just having a great time. They're on their lunch break and they're just having so much fun. And you can see that little paper airplane is shooting right over the, uh, the cubicle into the next one. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to visit me at pinkwhisperdesigns.com. As always, thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.